Bang! Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking, it's going to be swearing, it's going to be smoking. If you don't like those things, you have been warned. So, here I come in three, look, look, two, look, one. Bang! Welcome everybody, my name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. All right. <laughs> now, awesome. we have a great one today. All right. So, number one, brothers, IOTA. Is a, oh, and I have something to show you, right? Uh, but let's read this and I'll show you something. IOTA applying for ISO certification. Bang, to become a standard. I told you. Anyway, so do you understand? All right, well, I'll explain it all to you in a second. Now, Ledger X, remember we read about them yesterday? The futures, well, they got delayed today. The CFTC did not give them their license. So we're going to read about it. But actually, but there's some good stuff coming out of it. And that's why I want to read the story to you. Oh, excuse me. My allergies are killing me today. And then finally, Tether integrates with Liquid Network. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is, remember I was teaching, I taught you guys a little bit about arbitrage. You buy it cheap over here and you sell it over there. So I'm going to show you about um, this thing and the arbitrage trading opportunities that are coming. And then we'll do the shout outs and uh, daily wrap up. So let's begin that we begin. But first, I want to show you this. Wait. This is right now. This happened right now. It's now 4.06 a.m. Boom. Walmart might launch its own stable coin. Yeah. This came out 24 minutes ago. Yeah. Walmart might launch its own stable coin. And what, what we're not going to do it as a whole story because I don't really give a shit about stable coins. It doesn't do anything for our money. So, But they're just saying that it'll be, it'll be a fee-free or fee-minimal place to store your wealth that can be spent adding that these accounts can also earn interest. So it sounds like it's going to be sort of like a bank even. You're going to earn interest. All right, so, but, you know, we're not here for, for that. But that was 24 minutes ago. That just came out. Uh, yeah, so, but we're not here for that. Let's do what we do. Boom, let's do our normal. Let us refresh. <laughs> All right. We at, uh, look, you Bitcoin moving a little bit. All right, Bitcoin's at 10,540. All right, moving back up over 10. That's nice. And yesterday we were at 9,976. So that's pretty much a uh, $600 gain today. Nice, nice indeed. All right, top 10 of the day, brothers. Usual suspects of the day, brothers. Look, top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Binance Coin, Tether, EOS, Bitcoin SV and Stellar, yes. It's like the market moves. It's like mostly single digits up. Well, we'll just say how we usually say it. Single digits up, single digits down. Yes. Single digits up to single digits down. <coughs> single digits up to single digits down. Single digits up to single digits down. Wait a minute. Okay. Two single digits up to single digits down. Let me just. All right. All right. Let's look who lost money today. If you see anything on here you like, go get it because it is on sale. Boom. Top 10 lose of the day, brothers. Lambda, V-System, Japan Content, Bitcoin, Golem, Lisk, Basic Attention, Nano, Solve, and Holo. Now let's look who made money today, brothers. Boom. Top 10 winners of the day. Top 10 earners of the day. First coin. Energy, Tezos, Grin, Ren, XMAX, Bitcoin SV, Vestchain, Bitcoin, and Decred. All right, let's look at total market cap of the day. Two eighty six. Hold on, I can't see. Two eighty six point eight today in market cap, and yesterday we're at two seventy three point six. So that's a nice uh, thirteen billion dollar rise, thirteen point five billion dollar rise in our total market cap, and total volumes of the day fifty three point zero billion. And yesterday's was ah, 52.9. So pretty much nothing happened. We went up uh, a tenth of a billion. All right. All right. So 
All right, so no big deal. All right. All right. All right, so let's get to the stories. Boom. All right. I owe it for ISO certification. So they're trying to get ISO certified. So you know what ISO is, right? It's an international standards thing, right? So for instance, in banking, your bank has a thing called a called a uh, a routing number, right? Every bank in the world has a routing number. It's an ISO standard routing number issued by SWIFT. And that's your standard. Those routing numbers are the standard, right? Okay, forget about that. That's not a good example. Uh, a good example would be Oh, like USB, right? A USB cable. If I buy a USB cable here, if I buy it in China, if I buy it in Africa, no matter where I buy it, I can plug it into my computer and it'll work, right? Because it's a standard. USB is a standard. And so remember we read the other day how IOTA, um, uh, they, they, the, the, the one... They landed the largest um, microprocessor company in Europe. Remember, the microprocessor company is going to put IOTA on their chips so that the developers will just have IOTA-ready chips already. You know, like, uh, yeah, it'll be IOTA-ready, Tangle-ready, ready to go on the Tangle, right? So it seems like that's what, and then I told you guys about how last year Fujitsu and Microsoft said they were trying to make IOTA a standard, like, yeah, you know, an Internet of Things standard. And Fujitsu said they were going to put IOTA in all of their Internet of Things devices that they create. I think it was supposed to start this year. Like I said, I haven't heard much about that again. And so so here it is. They're trying to get... So that was, that was in terms of what the companies want to do, but now they're getting it. You know, they're getting... They want the real certification, right? So let's check it out. The IOTA Foundation will soon become an officially standardized organization. This move is expected to lead to wider acceptance and adoption that can make IOTA's digital currency, MIOTA, a more valuable asset. Of course, it will. What the fuck? Richard Soley, <clears throat> the chairman and CEO of the Object Management Group, <clears throat> made the announcement while addressing the IOTA Foundation during the first edition of a quarterly update live stream dubbed IOTA Insights on July 31st, 2019. Soli intimated that the innovative cryptocurrency project will have an official open standard by the end of next year. He also assured that shortly after OMG gives standards for IOTA's innovative technology, it will be succeeded by official standardization mm -hmm excuse me, by the ISO shortly after. So ISO standards, like, you know, yeah, like I just can't express enough. Like they're international standards. I, I don't know what else to say. Like, so here, in, I'll give another example. Well, we gave the example, like your, your USB cable, you know, it's, that's the standard. A USB cable has to fit XYZ criteria, right? To make it a USB cable. And it's the standard. So, um, the Object Management Group, OMG, which is headquartered in Needham, Massachusetts, it's here in America, has a membership that currently includes hundreds of IT and non-IT organizations. The consortium is geared towards creating a standard architecture for distributed network objects. <laughs> OMG provides a portable and interoperable object model that function across multiple platforms all right uh, different potential applications the Oda foundation uses the tangle instead of the blockchain that is issued by bitcoin and all other cryptocurrencies the tangle differs slightly uh, from bitcoin technology in several ways okay we, we know about the tangle right it, it blows blockchains away it's it's in uh, it's it's infinitely scalable you can't hack it it has infinite transactions, blah, 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 okay? It's, it just blows blockchains away. So IOTA's tangled for several applications. IOTA has generated significant visibility 
with its innovative technology and next generation ledger. Oh, but if you really care, you can go back and read these. I put the links to these videos in the description of the video. Uh, the links to these articles in the description of the video every night. So if you want to, you can just go back and read that. Several companies have contacted the people behind IOTA to learn more about the project's underlying technology. As a result, developers and technologists have been working on using IOTA's Tangle for several applications, ranging from being used in cars to enable crowdfunding, to enabling crowdfunding. Technological standardization, when it happens, will be good for IOTA, which will be partnered with big names like Audi, Microsoft, Bosch, and a few more others. Told you about Fujitsu wanted to stand, said something about standardizing. <laughs> IOTA started this year with the declaration of joining hands with IBCS Group on January 2019. IBCS would use Tangle Innovation to be able to track and trace supply chain solutions. Tangle Technology will help the company gather and share the logistics carriers. The ISO is the International Organization for Standardization. That's what ISO is what they create the standards of Earth, okay? Um, an internationally accepted body which sets international standards. That's so SWIFT. Um, you know, SWIFT, the banking thing that, you know, everyone talks about, oh, Ripple's going to take over SWIFT. SWIFT is an ISO standard issuer, right? So your bank gets its its BIC number, your BIC number, your bank's BIC. That's your bank identification code. It's issued by SWIFT, which is an ISO organization, All right? You guys get it? All right. Um... So, <clears throat> a body which sets international standards. It is composed of representatives from standards organizations across the world, and receiving ISO certification will be a huge milestone for IOTA. Of course, if the thing says you're a standard, well, there it is, buddy. You're you're an international standard for something, right? And so, yeah. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, amazing for IOTA, man. They're trying to be a standard of of internet of things that's what it sounds like so we'll see if that works out but they're going for their certification and that's what's good that's what's good so it's not just all oh, companies are going to use it but you know it will be internationally recognized as you know a standard okay you get it right <laughs> i hope that i'm coming across a, a properly so look look you guys know i love me some iota i love me some tango bang look now bang what happened why the first physical Bitcoin futures haven't launched. So we're going to read this, but there's good news in here. So I'm going to read, like, that's why I'm reading this. Because if it, if it, this story is good, it gets into detail. If it didn't get into these details, I'd just tell you, ah, I didn't open and we'd have talked about something else. But this gets into some important information. It actually reveals some information that I didn't know. And so we're going to actually be learning while also being upset that this fucking thing didn't launch <laughs> all right so hold on let me let me get some fuel yeah yeah what a fiasco this is actually i shouldn't call it a fiasco it's not a fiasco that's definitely not a good look all right Ledger X admitted Thursday <clears throat> it has not launched Bitcoin futures as the firm had previously claimed after the U.S. Commodities Futures Trading Commission said it had not approved the exchange to do so. The company previously told Coindesk <clears throat> it was planning to launch the product on Wednesday. Ledger X would have been the first venue in the U.S. to offer physically settled Bitcoin futures, which are contracts that pay out in the underlying cryptocurrency rather than in cash. Not only are they delivered physically, in the sense that our customers can get Bitcoin after the futures expires, but also they can deposit Bitcoin to trade in the first place. Uh, Ledger X CEO Paul Chow told Coindesk on Monday, but on Thursday morning, The day after Coindesk's initial story ran, 
CFT chief, CFTC chief communications officer Michael Short said in an email statement, Ledger X, has, Ledger X has not been approved by the commission. Indeed, a look at Ledger X's data page shows only options and swaps trades that took place on Wednesday, but no futures. Now, did you hear that though? Okay, so there were no futures. Um, but their thing, Omni, did start doing the swaps and the options. Whoops, wait, hold on. The options and the swaps. So I might talk to you guys about investment vehicles. Right, there's many investment vehicles. <coughs> if I want to trade Microsoft share, yeah, I got like seven ways to trade it, right? I can either just buy them and hold them. I can buy a Microsoft futures contract. I can buy a Microsoft options. I can buy Microsoft swaps. I can buy Microsoft derivatives. Um, invest in, not buy. Invest in Microsoft derivatives. I can invest in... Uh, shit, I can't remember. There's a, there's a bunch. I mean, so those are investment vehicles. Those are different ways to expose your portfolio to Microsoft shares, right? I just told you five. Those are called investment vehicles. And so options are one investment vehicle and swaps are another kind. So that is going to bring money into the market. So options, guys, if there's options traders out there who want to invest in crypto, all right, they have a place now, right? Um, who else is doing it? Mike Novogratz, he's going to start the options, crypto options too, right? So options traders are going to get to come in. And then swaps guys are going to get to come in. So while the futures guys didn't get to get here, um, this thing bring this will still bring liquidity, all right? Um, because you know they're putting their money into the markets. So and like I said, like I showed you the five investment vehicles. Yeah, well, if you're an options guy, that's how you trade in options, right? Like I'm a derivatives guy, so I trade derivatives. You know, I wouldn't trade. I am going to trade this in futures when it comes here, but I wouldn't trade this market with options, right? I'm not an options guy. I mean, I know a little bit about options. Oh, Lee, these allergies are killing me, man. But I don't know enough that I'd put my money up to do it. You know what I mean? But options guys, they're going to come in here and be like, great. Now I can do what I know how to do, which is trade options. You get it? Yes, you master a style, you know. So I'm a derivatives trader. So I'll destroy any, oh, bang. You, you give me a, 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 a trading platform derivatives and I'll, I'll crush these guys, right? And so... But if you gave me an options platform, I'd probably get crashed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. You know, my account would be blown in like a month or something. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that it's bringing money in. So while, so bottom line being, fuck, bottom line being, um, we didn't get the futures contracts we want, but options and swaps opened up and went live. So that's money coming into the market, okay? Okay, so fuck, sorry. So when contacted by Coindesk, Ledger X Chief Operating Officer and Risk Officer, Jathika Chow, acknowledged that the company was not trading futures contracts. She insisted that the prior conversation with her and Paul Chow about a Wednesday launch pertained only to Ledger X's retail platform, Omni, which she said is actively serving swaps and options products to traders at present. Bye! It is open. Um... We're still operating. We're putting the product in front of retail. All right. So retailers are getting it now. So it's not. Okay. So I see. So it's not institutions yet. Um, approval still needed. So the CFTC last month approved Ledger X as a designated contract maker, um, which was one of two approvals the company needed to proceed with the futures launch. The other is an amendment to its derivatives. Um, Clearing organization license. It is currently authorized to clear swaps, but not yet futures. In the CFTC's own press release dated June 25th, announcing the DCM approval, the regulator noted Ledger X has requested that the CFTC amend its order of registration as a DCO, which limits Ledger X to clearing swaps to allow it to clear futures listed on its DSM. Uh, according to CFTC regulations, Title 17, Part 39.3, the agency has 128 days, or sorry, 180 days to approve or deny a DCO application. The CFTC said to clear swaps, 
and they said later that we should actually clear futures too. And we were waiting essentially for this amendment, Paul Chow said. Um, Jathinka Chow, Jathika Chow, appeared to suggest that because this period had passed without an, ob- an ob- without an objection from the CFTC, the company was under the impression that it was clear to proceed. All right, let me explain that. So here in America, if you apply like to be an ETF or something to the SEC, here in America, the Security and Exchange Commission, will they have 90 days to approve you, deny you, or they just don't do anything? And when it comes to the SEC, if the SEC doesn't approve you, you can still go ahead and do the thing you want to do as long as they haven't denied you, right? Like, that's how it works. So in other words, if they don't approve your thing, basically they're saying, well, go ahead, but we're going to be watching it, and if it doesn't comply, we'll shut it down, right? And so apparently... Ledger X thought, (laughs) I mean, don't they have lawyers? What the fuck? I guess they thought that, well, the 180 days were up. So since the CFTC didn't deny them, they thought, great, well, we'll just launch it then. Yeah, and the CFTC guy says, nah, dog, you're not allowed to do that. Not with us, not with the CFTC. That's an SEC thing. And so, so this is Chow says, um... We filed on November 8th, and we have email correspondence confirming there was no additional items that we needed for the amendment. Holy shit. Fuck my nose, man. Fuck. Fuck. However, Ledger X needs explicit approval, according to a senior official. So here's what the official says. (laughs) He goes, every new and amended DCO application needs to be affirmatively approved by the commission. That's the difference. With the SEC, you don't need affirmative approval. You got denial, approval, and then just if they don't say anything. And so if they don't say anything, the SEC, you're allowed to go ahead and do what you want. Nah, dog. The CFTC guy says, hell no, you need affirmative approval. In other words, you need explicit approval or explicit denial. There's none of that gray area, right? (laughs) So he says, needs to be affirmatively approved by the commission, said the official who did not want to be identified. The absence of a decision does not constitute approval and entity self-certification is not an option. So that's the difference. Like with the SEC, you can just be like, all right, I'm going to go do it. Yeah, yeah. he says, uh, you know, he's like, nah. Entity self-certification is not an option. Now you're probably asking, well, Shamori, BACT is allowed to self-certify. Right. But BACT is owned by ICE. ICE owns the New York Stock Exchange. So ICE has special privileges, you know, like, you know, yeah, man, like they're so institutional, they're so foundational to, you know, the economics of America. They own the New York Stock Exchange, so they're trusted, you know, so they're like, all right, they'll let them do that. You know, that's a whole, do you see what I'm saying? So, so BACT is allowed to self-certify and that's why on the 22nd they started their tests and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, but a company like these guys, nah, dog, you got to have self-certification is not an option for these guys. You know, these guys need proper things. So the regulation does state that the commission may stay the running of the 180 review period, 180 day review uh, period, if an application is materially incomplete in accordance with Section 6A of the Act. But there's no indication whether the CFTC took this action. That said... LedgerX's DCO application appears to be in the very final stages of the approval process, the senior official said. So it's coming. Paul Chow told Coindesk that there's little difference between swaps and futures products. (laughs) Exactly. It's like the same thing. Basically, it's just a total technicality that a swap and a future are different things. And it's like it's actually a little different, he said. The differences between futures and swaps is ridiculous. It's the same product. So. And that's the thing. And that's the other part I wanted to show you. All right. The futures didn't come. But if you're a futures guy, fuck it, man. You'll just trade the swaps. Right? They're they're basically the same thing. I'm not a swaps master. So I couldn't sit here and tell you the true functioning of swaps and stuff like that. Like I can do with with the futures. But the guy, he's saying it's the same thing. And from what I've seen of swaps, yeah, they are. Right? Like, I, I think... 
you know, I think, anyways, so, bottom line is, guys, um, the Omni, Ledger X's Omni has opened, the swaps, where was that? Uh, the swaps and the options are already available. Oh, here we go. Where is it? Where the fuck was that? They're already available, so that bring, that's bringing in liquidity right now. Where was that? Anyways, you guys remember I showed it to you. I hate when I do that. I can't remember where it's... Oh, there it is. There we go. Options and swaps are available. Um, but no futures yet. But that's bringing liquidity. And so, good for us. It's not exactly what we wanted. But it's halfway there. So, boom. Good for us. Now, bang. Tether's integration with Liquid Network opens a floodgate of opportunities for arbitrage trading. Now, okay. So, I just showed you about investment vehicles. Five different ways you can invest in Microsoft right there, right? Well, here's another opportunity, a trading opportunity. Um, arbitrage trading is an active trading, an active trading style. And so what arbitrage trading is, is on an exchange, uh, I, uh, so let's just do it the easy, the easy way. Arbitrage trading is there's an asset. It's an available on multiple exchanges, but there's a price discrepancy, right? On one exchange. So let's say, and I wanted to show you guys this because one of you guys gave me this website and I was I wanted to show you with this story, but I couldn't find that website. It, you gave it to me, but it was, on my, it was on my other laptop, that old one that I had. And I forgot to get the website out of it. But <clears throat> anyways, the point is you buy something cheap on one exchange and sell it on another exchange for a higher price. So, you know, you know, I think like Coinbase is usually, Bitcoin is usually, I don't know, isn't it usually like $50, $60 more expensive on Coinbase than it is on Binance, right? <clears throat> so an arbitrager would just go buy a, a, a ton of a ton of Bitcoin on, on, on Binance and go sell it on Coinbase. You make the difference. That's called arbitrage, arbitrage opportunities. And so there's guys out there, they're called arbitragers, right? Um, they have computers and all their computers do is just scan markets and compare prices. <clears throat> and, you know, depending on the hedge funds criteria, you know, the, 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 the computer just makes the trade for them. Remember I read to you, I read to you about those guys called flash boys, flash boys. They're called high frequency traders, Google high frequency trading. And so what they do is called high frequency trading. Remember when I read to you? Yeah. One, one guy was doing like 80,000 trades a day. Yeah, his computers were. Right, because all it does, it captures some of these guys, they capture fractions of a penny. Uh, you know, like, so it'll be something like Microsoft shares over here are $100.001. You know, and over there, it's $100.005. Yeah, they'll buy a million Microsoft shares and then sell them over there. Just for that tiny little difference. Now, that tiny little difference might seem small, but when you buy a million shares of it, yeah, the guy just made 100 Gs. Yeah, right now, bang, his computers just did that for him. Ba In seconds, okay? So that's arbitrage opportunities. And so, um, yeah, this looks like this is going to help out arbitrage. And I read this. This is quite interesting. It reminds me, all right, let's, let's get moving. Well, let me get a sip first, and then we'll get moving. Yeah, guys, so arbitrage trading, arbitrage trading. And so, I mean, for hell, I mean, all you got to do is you just open your Binance account, buy a Bitcoin on buy or whatever, whatever, whatever asset, whatever, any asset, you know, let's go over here for a second. Let me get a sip. I get too excited. I forget to get fueled. So... You know, like right here, a Litecoin is what, 9861 right now. Yeah, maybe on some exchange it's a hundred bucks. Maybe on Binance it's ninety eight. Maybe on Coinbase it's a hundred bucks. Yeah, so you buy a shit ton of these. And you sell them instantly on Coinbase. Pocket the difference. That's arbitrage. Yes. yes, that's trading arbitrage. You know, my favorite, regulatory arbitrage. <laughs> we'll get into that one day, people. Look, look. All right, guys, let's go.
All right. Oh, many. Yes. Yes. So look, look. So Tether and Bitfinex have. Wait, is this a little small? Hold on a second, guys. All right, fuck it. So, Tether and Bitfinex have consistently been the hot topic of 2019. From unraveling unravelings in the New York uh, Attorney General's lawsuit to developments that impact the far ends of the crypto ecosystem. Tether's integration, integration with Liquid Network is one such important development that has allowed it to stay in the cryptocurrency chasm and perhaps leave its mark in the years to come. We're excited to announce the launch of the industry's largest stablecoin, Tether USDT on the Liquid Network, as an upgrade to USDT's original platform. Liquid provides a fast settlement, times, confidential transactions, and robust multi-sig security. Multi-sig. That's that institutional grade stuff. Yes, that tells me these boys are thinking ahead. Um, you know, uh, Tron got their multi-sig. And um, I believe it was Cardano. They just got their multi-sig. Or the multi-sig's coming in Shelly. The upgrade, I don't remember, but they're coming. Multi-sig. Yes. Important, gentlemen. Important. Look, the integration of Liquid Network is a major boost to Tether's Omni-Layer as it provides near instant settlement, confidential transactions, which are a must in the industry. Oh my gosh, I think there's some nose hair that is out of shape or something. It's, my nose is tickling. Look, as it provides near instant settlement, confidential transactions, which are a must in the industry that has encroached users' privacy and built in a market around it, and the security of multi-sig. Multi-sig, that's that, uh, like I said, institutional grade stuff. Um, Liquid Network is an inter-exchange settlement network. Okay, so yeah, check this out. Liquid Network is an inter-exchange settlement network linking together cryptocurrency exchanges and institutions around the world. It also has a feature that allows tokenizing of fiat currencies, securities, or even other cryptocurrencies. Yeah, you could tokenize your Microsoft shares if you want. I don't know how you do that, but it, you can do it. Ah, which has made the integration of USDT possible. Speaking with Amb Crypto on the integration, Adam Back, CEO and co-founder of Blockstream, stated, "We're working on integrating a number of other fiat coins into Liquid. Tether is the largest fiat coin by any order of magnitude, with four billion in circulation, and has a large daily trade volume, with recent peak of nine billion traded in a day. So it made sense to integrate Tether first. All right." At press time, deposit and withdrawal of liquid USDT were available at Bitfinex. So you're already allowed to get this stuff. The liquid USDT. Um, other exchanges, BTSE, BTC Trader, BTC Turk, OKX, OKCoin, Renrebit, and Sideshift AI are working on enabling liquid USDT. And so... It explains it here, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So hold on. I'll read it first and then just we'll do it. The implications of this are massive. Yes. With arbitrage trading, a forgotten discipline of trading in the crypto industry. Forgotten already? What do you mean? <laughs> uh, getting a new lease on life. Even though the markets are inefficient, arbitrage trading is not popular in cryptocurrencies because withdrawing funds from exchanges is time consuming, rendering arbitrage opportunities useless. Well, they're not useless, but no bullshit. Like, you know, you need those computers to do that. But not really. I mean, the truth is, is the price discrepancy. The difference in prices are so huge that if I buy a Bitcoin on or any asset on Binance and sell it over on Coinbase, you'll still make the money. So I, I kind of disagree, but. I mean, I guess unless he's, what he's trying to say is like to do it properly, right? Um, blah, 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 blah. Where are we? Um, um, further, crypto markets are extremely volatile, thus causing massive profits or losses if and when the arbitrage trade occurs. I mean, come on, man. <clears throat> but it is true. 
You could be in the middle of moving your Bitcoin to, to Coinbase. It takes a little while. And then the price of Bitcoin flies or something and it screws up your, <laughs> your trade. It's true. Coinciding with Tether's launch. But that's what this is about. Watch this. This, is, this. this explains it right here. And that's why this will be good for arbitrage. Coinciding with Tether's launch on Liquid Network and the previously available Liquid Swap, arbitrage trading is now a little closer to reality. Since Liquid Swap allows users to instantly swap cryptocurrencies in a matter of minutes, if not seconds. So that's what you need, right? Like, you don't want to be in the middle of, I mean, I don't have this kind of money, but I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put it in terms of like a whale, okay? <laughs> you don't want to be, you just bought 100 Bitcoin and you want to dump those on Coinbase and all of a sudden, bang! So you bought them on, 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 on Binance for, I don't know, let's say, all right, let me look at the prices. I can't even remember what, the, what we're at here. All right, 10.5. So let's just pretend, let's pretend it's 10,000 even on Binance. Wait, wait, wait. That might be a little too extreme. Let's say it's 10,500 on Binance. <laughs> I was getting extreme there. And it's this price here. It's 10,540 on Coinbase, right? So you buy 100 of these. You're expecting to get that $40 spread. It's called the spread. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's called the spread. So the difference between the price and an arbitrage and an arbitrage opportunity is called the spread. So it's spread minus fees. So that is how you calculate your money. So if I do this trade, I'm going to make this much spread. It's going to cost me that much fees. All right, I'm going to make this much spread, that much fees. So my overall profit will be that. That's how an arbitrager thinks, right? That's how those guys think. And so now, you buy an, you buy your Bitcoin at what did I say? A hundred Bitcoin, a <laughs> hundred Bitcoin on uh, on Binance, and you go, you dump them on on Coinbase real quick for the ten thousand five hundred and forty price. So you capture that forty dollars. So forty dollars times a hundred gives you four Gs. So you just made four Gs like that. Yeah, the computer does it but instant. But but because uh, these things have to move on the blockchain, right? It takes time. But so watch this. So. Um, these guys said, oh, I already read it to you, didn't I? Profits or losses. Da, 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 da. So coinciding with Tether's launch on Liquid Network and the previously available Liquid Swap, arbitrage trading is now closer. Oh, I did. Yeah. So instantly swap cryptocurrencies in a matter of minutes, if not seconds now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that in seconds. Bye. You're going to make mad money in this market. Moreover, Liquid Network is connected to the exchanges. Oh, two exchanges like BitMEX, Bitfinex, Bitso, and 20 other exchanges. Users will be able to swap cryptos and finance and fiat. Exactly. You'll be able to swap in and out of these. You'll be able to arbitrage. It's got over 20 exchanges that are going to be on this thing. So with a two-minute <clears throat> with a two-minute block finality, one can easily move assets on and off exchanges within minutes which greatly reduces the custody risk when not actively trading. Furthermore, Adam Back stated, working with the developers in Trezor and Ledger, we've been able to test early versions of Liquid support. There is more testing and development integration work in progress. So that should become available to users of Ledger and Trezor in the coming months. Bang. So you do your trades, bang. You just start sucking out your money on your Ledgers and your Trezors. <laughs> Trezos. Trezors. Uh, with the subsequent firmware upgrade, bringing native support for Liquid with on-device confidential transactions. Liquid Bitcoin and Liquid assets like Tether L, USDT, and others in Legend. All right. So, oh, fuck the mixed reactions. In addition to the above, Lightning Network, sorry, Lightning support for Liquid assets will make instant and low-cost stablecoin payments possible for the first time. In another note, Adam Back noted that he was personally able to move Bitcoin in the li liquid network from the Rock Trading and Bitfinex exchanges and be ready to trade in two minutes elapsed time. And that's what you need in this on an arbitrager, right? Because the prices are always moving, right? So you got to keep capturing the spread, capturing the spread. That's what their computers do. Just as soon as something moves a little bit, boom, the computer captures it um, and makes the trade for these guys. I mean... You know, but I'm talking about like for you guys, I mean, 
you can do it too, you know, especially, you know, when they have these fast trading times like this. Back further out of it, like one of the brothers, Bob, he wanted to, he wanted to make a trading uh, arbitrage bot last year. Back further out of that, it will be interesting to see arbitrage traders take advantage of that facility. And I'm back also confirmed that they were looking to add more stable coins to the Liquid Network and that Tether was just the beginning. So, bang, guys. Uh, this is just a cool little... What I wanted to show you was just that, I guess tonight in general, was just that there are other trading opportunities coming, right? It's not just this futures and ETF. I know that's what we talk about here a lot. And those are the, the killers. I mean, come on, let's get real. Let's get real. That back thing is too good, right? It's it's run by the New York Stock Exchange, you know, owner ICE. So, I mean, come on, that's going to bring us a, the proper, proper, proper institutional money we need. The $100 billion guys, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but even stuff like this um, is great. You know, arbitragers are going to come in, play around. Um, and then what we read about here, uh, boys are able to hang, do some options and swaps right now, play around. Um, so it ain't big money. This ain't big money. It's, it ain't chump change, but it ain't big money. And so, but it's nice in that it stabilizes you know, the more liquidity that comes in, the more stabilized our prices become, you know, a lot less of these thousand dollar days up and down like all crazy, you know, smooth, nice price movements. I told you up, retrace, up, retrace like a proper market that it all comes once we have a left liquidity. And so that's why I'm bringing this in. So and I and so why I brought up this story here is for, to show you the liquidity is coming and the investment vehicles are arriving, but also. Yeah, don't worry about it that the physically, because I'm sure you probably read this today. And so the physical features didn't come, but swaps and options did. And so, you know, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> they had swaps, options, and futures. Well, we got the two out of three, brothers. Look. And so, look, we'll eventually get the, the futures. <laughs> and so, yeah, shit. You know, we just got to wait. Yeah, like I told you, brothers. Look, in the investment world, there's a big saying, hurry up and wait. Okay, I want you to remember that because right, you're living it. Okay, just hurry up and wait. That's how it works in trading. That's how it works in markets, man. Yeah, my trade gets triggered, and then I gotta sit there for fucking fuck. Depending on what time frame I'm trading in, if I'm trading a daily time frame, I might get into a trade on a Monday. Yeah, I don't even cash out till flipping Thursday or something. Like, hurry up and wait, brothers. That's what we live in. That's the world you live in. That's the world you have entered. But look, look, when it pays off, it'll be well worth that wait. Yes, indeed. So look, look, brothers, love you guys. Let's go. Shout out. Bye. Yes. Be well worth the wait, brothers. Well worth the wait. Now, you shout outs. Look, look, Billiam. Bang. See you, brother. Love you, brother. Bang. The hook. Jamal Sim. See you, brother. Bang. Son of a bitch. Look, look. Bang. 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 Love you, air dropper. Yes, wrong case. Yes, Hurricane Moscow. Bang. See you, brother. Love you, brother. Bang. Bitcoin Kong. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Man, I used to like when I could see the pictures, right? Kong would show the pictures. Remember, he had the V-chain thing with the BMW symbol in it. Man, I don't like this new Twitter. Look. Oh, and so you guys see this. This is what these guys, bang, I, I tweeted some airdrops. Make sure you go, make sure you go and whatever, sign up for my Twitter or whatever it's called. Follow it or something. So you can get this kind of shit. Yes. So we got some airdrops today. Well, I mean, they're still there, so you can still go get them. <laughs> it didn't end yet. So look. All right, who else we got? DP Entertainment. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Edwin. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Yes. Moon Landing. See you, brother. Bye. Yes. What else we got? <laughs> Kong, what's Tom Kong saying? What do you say? Top ten of the day, brothers. Look, look, <laughs> bang, bang, look, look. Oh yeah, sweetie. Yeah, she sent this shit. Told her. Look, look. Told you guys, I'm always on duty. Fuck sticks. You think I'm playing games? So I sent the eardrops. So Stallion said, "Hey now," I said, "Go get him, sweetie." Hugs and kisses. You're always thinking about the people. She said, "Kiss back." Yes, I caught that one. Nice. I said I was on duty. Bang! <laughs> and she said, seriously, one of these. Yeah. That's how I roll, brothers. 
It's how I roll. <laughs> That's what I do from the time I wake up till I go to sleep. Just looking at markets, baby. Yes. Bye. Sons of bitches, I'm looking. See you. So look, look. All right. Oh, well, shit, since we're here. Yes. Look, look, sweetie. Bye. Love you, girl. All right. Anyone else? Look, Dr. Mark Van. Oh, look at his name. He's got a van in his name, too. Van Ridgeman. Ridge. Ridgeman M. Ridgeman M. Van Ridgeman M. Ah, it doesn't work. It's not the same. It's not like the Van Breeden. <laughs> Van Breeden. Michelle. Oh, I got to do one. Michelle. <laughs> My son. My precious jewel. The fruit of my womb. <laughs> my son. You are still downstairs. What are you doing today, son? <laughs> Mama, leave me, woman. My Bitcoin has gone up. How much did we go up again? $600 today. My Ethereum is up 3%. My Litecoin is up 2%, mama. Today, I count the money, woman. Leave me. <laughs> yeah, we had a rock of Ambrine in. Look, look. Yes, he wasn't even here, but we had to get one in there. But all right, buddy. Let me give you one, buddy. Dr. Mark Van Ridgeman. See if you had a... You have a cool name, buddy. You started with the Van, but the Ridgeman just... It's not the power. It's not the power. Van Ambrine. So, but look, who are you, buddy? Speaker on AI, blockchain, and analytics. Founder, Dataflock. Author of three management books. Changing academic publishing with Image.com. All right. Bangs, you, doctor. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yep. R3 is adding a second floor to their offices. Good for them. Celsius Network. Bang, see you. And Celsius liked this tweet because he tweeted me. Binium tweeted me about Celsius Network. Uh, doing some coin deposits or something, something, something. All right. And then we got CB News. Oh, oh, that's right. So I, the guy, the backed guy actually came out today and said, yeah, that <clears throat> they're going to launch soon. The CEO said that today, uh, Jeffrey Sprecher. I wasn't going to read it. Come on, whatever. Because he didn't give a date. So uh, soon, what does that mean? Uh, let's wrap this up. Martin Cooper, see you, brother. Bang. Chunk is son of a Bang. Freeman. Bang. Poppy Wood. So the W thing. All right. Bang. <laughs> Love you, brother. All right. Good enough. All right. Who's this dark dude right here? Spooky guy. Crypto thug. All right. Bang. All right. Good enough. Good enough. Let's. Bang, let's do this. Bang, yours, how we do. Bang, yours. So we had a great show today. Of course we did. That's how it happens around here. Greatness. Look. <laughs> so look, IOTA applying for ISO certification. They want to be a standard. So it'll be something like, what they're trying to get to is like, be something like, you know, yeah, it's a standard. You know, like your phone comes Bluetooth enabled, right? One day maybe your phone will come iota enabled right a standard like just you know like your your laptop every single laptop every single electronic we have now comes usb enabled right it's the standard just of course it has usb in it that's how it is right and so that's what it looks like iota is trying to do and it looks like that company gbo or whatever that was i guess it helps companies get standardization or something and so yeah, that's what they want to do. So just another, you know, I mean, we already talked about, we've talked about IOTA, you know, they have multiple onboardings, Fortune 500s and stuff like that. And so, you know, they're well on the way, but this standardization thing could push them even, even like to a whole other level, right? Yeah, so that's awesome. And so, all right. Then... Ledger X, futures delayed. Well, like I said, I 
The futures were delayed. That is a bitch. I'm not going to bullshit you. We want physically settled futures in here. So, so, so bad. So, so, so bad. Um, so we didn't get our physically settled futures. But we did get swaps. We did get options, which gives us liquidity. And so, uh, you know, it's something. It's not what we want, but it's something. And, uh, you know, it sounds like they're confident for the future, uh, you know, near future, that they'll be coming out with these futures contracts. So, yeah, whatever, man. We got to wait a little more. All right. And then finally, Tether integrated with the Liquid Network. Arbitrage trading opportunities coming, brothers. Bang. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you want to do that, it's going to have over 20 exchanges. Yeah, you can look at the prices right there. So you'll be able to see, oh, how much is one on Binance? How much is on OKX? How much is it on, you know, uh, wherever, Coinbase? How much is it on, how much is a, this asset on Bittrex? And you'll be able to trade within them and, and, and capture the spread. Those arbitrage opportunities. So, yeah, that's something that's coming. So, something good. All right, let's chill it and kill it. Get you back to your wives and lives. Bang, subscribe below. Press the bell so you get automatic notification when I do this show. My name is Shamari Clark. I love doing this. Love talking money. Love talking crypto. This is the favorite time of my day. So, I will see you guys tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, my name is Shamari Clark. Bang, I'm always on duty. Go get those airdrops that I put on the Twitter, guys. Look, look. Bang. Over and out.